All right, my friends, welcome back. Today we are discussing another simple program called as inverse of an array, which I feel you must know so that your understanding of arrays can improve. Okay, now what does this question expect you to do? Let's understand. Assume you are given an array A like this. Now you have to find the inverse of this array. Now what does the inverse of an array mean? First and foremost, to find the inverse of an array, you need to create another array which is the same size as the previous array. So I am creating a new array B whose length is same as that of A, same size. Okay. Now, what I want you to understand is, if B truly has to be the inverse of A, then what you must do is, go to A and whatever is the value, that position you must go, that index you must go to in the B array and whatever is the index, that should become the value. What do you mean, sir? index is 0, value is 2. Now, this 2 should be the index in B. So, I will go to the second index. This index should become the value in B. I will store 0. Are you able to understand? Similarly, I will come here 1 and 3. So, in the third index, I should store 1. So, see in the third index, I will store 1. Similarly, 2 and 1, which means in the first index, I should store 2. In the first index, I will store 2. In the 0th index, I should store 3. In the 0th index, I will store 3. In the 4th index, I should store 4. In the 4th index, I will store 4. And this is how the inverse is created. So, whatever is a value becomes index. Whatever is the index becomes value. Now, how do you write code for this? Very simple. Watch it, guys. I will run a loop called as, uh, uh, I will run a loop on my array A, i, which begins from 0 and goes till the end. It goes till the end. Inside this what I will do is first of all a of i, a of i means value. I will take the value at the ith index, store it inside a variable called as v. Now i has index, v has value. Now in my array b, I must store, what should I store? v should become the index, value should become the index. So see b of v. In that what should I store? Whatever is the index should become the value. So I will store i. So what am I saying? Store the value i in array b at index v. I hope you are able to think. That is it. Simple code. Anyways, this is a very simple program. Let us go write the code. Now, let us write some code. I have created an integer array which has 2, 3, 1, 0, 4 and I have to inverse it. So, what I will do is, I will just create one uh, static function which is going to return an integer array for me and I will call that function itself as inverse. I will call it as inverse. And what should it accept? It accepts an integer array called as A. That is what ultimately it accepts. I hope you are able to think. Yes, sir, you are right. Now, inside this, what will I do? I told you to inverse A, you need a new array, which is the same size of A. So, I will tell new int and here I will tell, please create a new array, which is the same size of A. How will you get the size of A? A dot length. That is it. Right? Great. Okay, sir. Next, what will you do? Next, what I will do is I will give it a reference. I will just call this as b and obviously b is nothing but an integer array. I hope till here things are clear. Yes, sir, we understood. Next what? Next what means very simple. Run a loop on a. So, I will tell for, right? And here I will just tell int i starting from 0th index, i going till the end of a. So, a dot uh, length. a dot length and i plus plus like this I will tell. Any confusion? I am just traversing over my array a. Now what we have to do is, let us collect the value present inside a and store it somewhere. So I will just create one variable called as v and in that I will store a of i. So what you must understand is ultimately i has the index, v has the value. Now value should become index in b, i should become the value. So, all I will do is in the next line I will tell, now in my array b at index v, please store value as i, that is it. And then ultimately after doing this, we have to return b, because you only told inverse will return an integer array and I am returning b, b is nothing but an integer array. Any confusion till here? Great. Now all we have to do is come here and all I will do is let me just uh, copy this loop, let me just uh, paste it here. So, as you can see, I have pasted it and what I am going to do now inside this is I will just print, uh, you know, a. So, system dot out dot print ln 
and I am just going to tell, I uh, will just uh, print A of i like this. So, let us just make it as print instead of println and just A of i and one space also I will just attach. Any confusion till here? Okay, sir, understood. Next what, sir? Next what means? Let me just uh, copy this, okay, and uh, I will just paste it. And uh, what I will do here is now before pasting, I will now just call this inverse function. I will just call this inverse function and I will pass my integer array a to it and what inverse will ultimately do for me is it is now going to return a new integer array. So, I will just call that as b. So, b is nothing but an integer array you know that is what inverse will do it will return b to you I am collecting it. Yes sir we understood. Next what sir? Next what means I want to print b for you. How will you print b sir if you ask me? All I will do is here instead of a dot length I will tell b dot length instead of a dot i I will tell b of i like this. And what I would like to do is here I would also just like to put one uh, system dot out dot print ln statement just so that you know that the line comes to the next line. Okay? Fine, this much we have done. Now, will this work is the question. Let us execute it. Upon executing, one can notice that uh, this is how the output will look like 23104, right? Has become 32014. And how do you check if it is right? See, 0th index value was 2. At the second index, at the second index value is 0, it got inverse. At the first index value was 3, okay? At the third index value is 1. At the second index value was 1. At the first index value is 2. At the third index value was 0. At the 0th index value is 3. At the fourth index value was 4. At the fourth index value is 4 only because if it is the same you inverse it no problem. So, definitely it works. So, a very very simple problem how to inverse it. I hope you have been able to understand. Now, let us catch up in the next class.